Before we jump into Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, I want to actually go back for just a moment to Matthew 5. And I want to touch on something. I want to connect last week's sermon from Pastor Ed to this week's sermon. So last week, Pastor Ed talked about the beauty of being salt and light in the world, right? And Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, and it's printed out there for you. So can we read it together as a church? So take out your little hand out there. Let's read it together as a church. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Jesus has a desire. And that's for his people, right? His disciples. To be salt and light. To salt the world and bring light to darkness. And we do that for a purpose, right? We do that so that the world may actually see what? Our good works. God says, take your good works out into the world, right? Luther said, God doesn't need your good works, but your neighbor does. And so we take our good works out into the world so that the world may see Jesus in and through us. That's how the world gets to know Jesus, in and through us, as we shine our light in this world. But Jesus also knows this, that we have the tendency as people to take something good and make it bad. To take something he's given to us and distort it for our own purposes. And that's, what, that's why we need to go to chapter 6 this morning. Go to chapter 6, verse 1. And you're going to see a warning this morning. That I need to listen to very closely. And you need to listen to very closely. Watch this. Matthew 6, verse 1. Here's the warning. And you see it with that first word. Beware. Right? He says, beware of practicing your righteousness. Right? That means beware of doing things that are good in this world. Beware of practicing your faith in this world. Why? Before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you'll have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Right? That's the warning, okay? Now what's the difference between Matthew 5 and Matthew 6? What's the difference between these two passages? One says, let your light shine so everybody can see them. And the other says, beware. What is the difference? The difference is the purpose. The difference is the motivation. The difference is the heart that you bring with it, right? See, the Bible says you can do one of two things. You can either, A, you can shine, and if you're taking notes, fill in the blank here. First one. You can shine to bring glory to God. That's beautiful. You can shine to bring glory to God, or... You can be seen to bring glory to yourself. I'm either going to shine my light to bring glory to Jesus, or I'm going to be seen by people to bring glory and admiration to myself. And Jesus is going to warn his disciples, and by extension, you and me, that we should avoid a life. We should avoid a life where we're seeking to be noticed, where we're seeking to be recognized where we're seeking to be praised, where we're seeking to draw attention to ourselves. We don't do that. We don't want to impress others with our faith. And with that warning comes a really significant consequence. Did you see it? Go back to the verse. Matthew 6, verse 1. He says, listen, if that's the life you lead, where you are constantly looking for the blessing that comes from people rather than God, you know what's going to happen? You're going to lose your reward from God. You will absolutely miss out on the reward that your father wants to give you. Now listen, I grew up Lutheran. Not a lot of people talked about this, but I want to show it to you this morning. It may be sound odd to hear about rewards in heaven. I know it did for me the first time I read it. It may sound a little odd, But it's not the first time Jesus talks about rewards, and it's not the last time he'll talk about it along with his disciples. So let me give you a brief sampling of what he's talking about here. In Matthew 5.11, Jesus said this, In the midst of persecution, Jesus tells us this, Be glad that you are being persecuted, for great is your reward in heaven. In Luke 6, verse 34, Jesus tells us, Love your enemies, do good to people, Give generously, expect nothing in return for anything that you do. Why? 
Because great is your reward in him. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 says this. St. Paul tells you, every morning that you get up to go to work, you work hard in this life. You work hard not for your boss. You work hard not for your company. You work hard not even for yourself. You work hard because you're serving the Lord. And as you work hard, you will receive your inheritance, which is your reward from God. Then 1 Peter chapter 1 tells us this, that in heaven, right now, waiting for me and waiting for you is an inheritance, our reward. And Peter says, it's un imperishable, unfading, undefiled, waiting in heaven just for you from Jesus. Now, what is it? I don't know. God doesn't tell us. But it sounds pretty darn good, right? It's something that it's waiting for us. It's something that is special. It's something that I don't want to miss and I don't want you to miss. And as a disciple, as a disciple, if I desire in this life to receive the praise, if I desire in this life to receive the admiration, if I desire in this life to receive the acknowledgement, then here's what's going to happen to me. I will miss the blessing that God wants to give. I'll be so concerned about the world's blessing that I miss his blessing. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to lose out on that. I don't want to lose out on the blessing that the creator of the universe gives. So what Jesus will do for us is he's going to give us three practical examples of things that happen in our lives so that we can see this played out. He's going to give us three specific ways to look at this. He calls them acts of righteousness. The church calls them spiritual disciplines or personal piety. It's the ways that you and I live out our faith here with Jesus. And the three of them are very simple. Let me give them to you. Number one, giving, okay? And if you're taking notes, you can fill in the blank. Giving. Giving is the act of sharing what you have with someone in need, okay? That's giving, right? Giving is the personal act of sharing what you have with someone in need. You have food. They don't. You share your food with somebody else. That's giving, right? Praying. Praying is the act of trusting God for everything. Praying is an act of trust that you believe that when you pray, God is in control. God is looking after me. God is taking care of me. God is you know, working through all things for his good and his glory. And I'm just, I'm learning to trust him. See, every time you pray, what you're doing is you're learning to trust God. And then number three, fasting. Fasting is the act of giving up something that's important to you, like food, so that Jesus can meet your needs. And he can meet your needs alone. So instead of looking for the world to meet your needs, you look to Jesus to meet your needs. Okay? That's what fasting does. Okay? So with these three examples, what I want to do this morning is I want to give you three takeaways. I want to give you three takeaways so you can see how Jesus gets all the glory and you get the reward. Okay? I want to give you three takeaways so that you can see how that you can live life consistently in such a way that you, God gets all the glory for everything so that we may shine and, he's, and the world sees his glory, right? But also it puts us in that position to receive for him what he wants to give to us, okay? So let me give them to you. Here's takeaway number one, all right? Ready? It's not if, but when. Will we all say that with me? It's not if, but when. If you're filling in the blanks, there you go. It's not if, but it's when. It's a mindset and mentality. See, Jesus says, it's not if you fast, but when you fast. It's not if you give, but when you give. It's not if you pray, but what? When you pray. It's not an if, but a when. See, giving, praying, and fasting are meant to be regular components of the life with Jesus. They're supposed to be just natural extensions of who we are with God. Think about it this way, right? In your life, you learn some very simple things, right? You learn in the morning when you get up, you brush your teeth. You learn in the morning when you get up, you take a shower. Or maybe you're at nighttime, you take a shower at nighttime. When you get up, you eat breakfast, right? So you shower, brush your teeth, 
You eat food. Those are things you learn how to do. And they become a rhythm, right? They become part of your rhythm of your life, right? See, this is what God says about praying, giving, and fasting. They should be a natural part of your life, a natural rhythm of your life. That's why he says, when you pray, when you give, when you fast. And each has a purpose and a blessing built into them. Now watch this, okay? When you pray, prayer is learning to trust Jesus. You have a sickness. God, I can't fix this, so I'm going to trust you for my healing. You have a financial situation that you can't overcome. God, I need you to show me the way. You lack wisdom for something? You pray, God, give me wisdom. See, I'm learning to trust God when I pray because I'm realizing the the end of myself. I'm realizing how little control I have, how little function I have, how how, how how little I can determine the outcome of anything, right? So I'm learning to trust God for what he is going to do. Fasting. Fasting says, I'm going to learn to depend on you, Jesus. So, for example, the reason that people give up food, and I'm not just talking about chocolate, right? I'm talking about food. The reason you fast for 18 hours or 24 hours or 36 hours is so that in the process, when that bodily hunger starts to come, Jesus fills that hunger with the word. You fast. You learn to be dependent upon Jesus. Giving. When you give to somebody in need, Whether it's your time, whether it's money, whether it's a combination of both, right? What you are doing is you are learning to develop a heart that loves like Jesus. That's what it does. And so God says, when you pray, when you give, when you fast. These are important elements. So we got to pause for just a moment and do a little gut check here, right? So here it is. When was the last time, other than just 10 minutes ago when we prayed, right? (laughs) When was the last time outside of Sunday morning did you pray all by yourself, and no one told you to. Think about that. Number two, when was the last time you gave to somebody who was in need? When was the last time you gave to somebody who was in need, outside of maybe what we do here? When was the last time you gave to somebody who was in need that nobody knew about? When was the last time, that was a hard one, right? When was the last time you fast for an extensive period of time? When was the last time you fasted? Now, I'll admit, I'll be honest. Of those three, fasting is the one that I don't get and I haven't yet embraced and I need to learn. Because it's not if, but it's what? When. It's not if, but it's when. And so those three things, man, we have to kind of be honest with ourselves. When was the last time I prayed by myself? When was the last time I gave that nobody knew? And when was the last time that I fasted and nobody knew? It's not an if. But it's a win. Number two, don't be like the hypocrites. I remember going to camp and we sang this wonderful song called, I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba 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 ba. And there's a, there's a verse in there. I don't want to be a hypocrite, a hypocrite. I don't want to be a hypocrite, a hypocrite. I don't want to be a hypocrite, a hypocrite. Why? Because they're not hip with it. I don't want to be a hypocrite. Number two, watch this. Matthew chapter six, verse two says, thus when you give to the needy, don't sound a trumpet like before as the what? Hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. Now watch Matthew six, five. And when you pray, you must not be like who? The hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. And Matthew 6, 16, and when you fast, don't look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they've received the reward. Jesus makes it so clear that our actions should not be like the who? Hypocrites. See, hypocrites do things so that they can get praised by others. Hypocrites do things so that they can be seen by others. Hypocrites do things so that they can be admired by others. They do things so they can get the praise of people. They do things so that people around them can see what a good Christian they are. They do things so that they can be admired from a distance or close up. 
whether it's seen, whether it's praised, whether it's admired, right? Now, here's the thing. When Jesus says, if that's the way you're going to roll, if that's the way you're going to live, he says this not once, not twice, but three times. He says, you already have your reward. It comes from men, and now you've lost what God wants to give you, if that's the way you want to roll. Right? So we regularly need to look in the mirror. We regularly need to do a gut check. We regularly need to ask ourselves this question. Am I doing something so that someone will praise me? Am I doing something so I get some praise? Number two, am I doing something so that other people can see me doing it so they can see that I'm chipping in and doing my part, so that they can acknowledge my, you know, volunteerism, my servant attitude, whatever it may be. Am I doing it just so that I can be seen by others? And then lastly, am I doing things so that I can be admired and respected and people look at me with high praise and think I'm all that in a bag of chips? Am I doing it just to put a face on? I don't really want to do it. But I feel like i got to do it to put a face on. What is your motivation? Where are you coming from? See, I need to always do this gut check. And so do you. Because the evil one has a very clear objective. The evil one always has a way of looking at things and going after us. Right? Okay? And so the goal is to live our life differently than the hypocrites, right? It's to live life in a different way, right? And that's what we want to be able to go through is to live life in a different way from the hypocrites. We do things, right, for the wrong reasons. That's what the, hypocr- that's what the evil one wants to do. He wants you to do one of two things. Either A, he wants you to do things for the wrong reason, to be seen, to be admired, to be praised. Or he wants you to do nothing at all. You don't pray, you don't fast, and you don't give, right? Either way, he wins. Either way, he's got what he wants. Either way, that sin that's in me and you becomes real and evident. Either I do things for the wrong reason, or I just don't do anything at all, right? This reveals who we really are. This reveals what has happened to our heart. This reveals that something is going wrong inside of us today. Our heart is being led in the wrong direction. Our heart is flowing with sinful desires. And when we recognize that, right? When we recognize that we're in the wrong place, when we recognize that our motivations are not right, when we recognize that we're doing things for the wrong purpose and the wrong reason, when we're seeking the praise of other people, when we want to be admired and respected, when we want glory rather than glory for Jesus, when we see our sin in the mirror, That's when we need to change. That's when we need the gospel to change us. That's when we need to pray these words. Create in me, Lord, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not from your presence, but take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. We need to pray those words. We need to pray, Father, forgive me, for I do not know what I do. Father, give me a new heart. Create in me a new heart. Give me a new life. Give me, make me a new creation. So that my purposes for life are flowing from you. That's when we need our heart to be changed and overwhelmed by the love that God has for us on the cross. That's when we need our heart to flow down from the cross and let the forgiveness of Jesus set us free. That's when we need His death and resurrection to give me new life and new motivation and new purpose because it's in a new heart that allows me to embrace takeaway number three. And it's this. Number three. I love this one. Live life on the down low. It was funny. Someone in the early service came up to me and said, what's a down low? (laughs) So it just means live life not in the spotlight of others. Live life in such a way that it's not about what anyone else is doing, but it's totally about Jesus. Live life, with an, as as a, a song used to say, with an audience of one. Live life on the down low. Watch this, Matthew chapter 6. 
But when you give to the needy, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that you may be giving in secret. And your father who sees in secret will what? Reward you. Now watch this, Matthew 6.6. 6. But when you pray, you go into your room, you shut the door, you pray to your father who is in secret, and your father who sees you in secret will what? Say with me, church. Reward you. Now jump down to verse 17. But when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face. That was the Old Testament practice of keeping the... the see, see, when people fasted, sometimes they would fast for 10, 15, 20 days. And so their, their physical features would become disfigured, right? Because they would be, kind of your skin would become taut, right? Because you weren't eating, right? And so the way to, the way to hide that was to put oil on. And, and to wash your face and put oil on, and it would hide the effects of fasting. So when he says, when you fast, now the tra- let's translate that principle, right? That means let's not broadcast to everyone when we start fasting. It doesn't need to be a social media post. Okay? It does, no one needs to know. You just do it for yourself. But when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in what? secret and your father who sees in secret will what church reward you jesus makes this so beautifully clear with his teaching the goal of life is to live opposite the hypocrite the goal of life isn't to be praised it's not to be admired it's not to be seen and the key to doing that right is that when you fast when you pray when you give you do it in secret. Now let me acknowledge something. There is a time and a place to do things publicly that are seen, right? Because God said, let your light shine before men so they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. There is a time. And that time is when we do it as the church. When the church goes out, when the church blesses a community, when the church gives to the homeless, when the church serves people who are in need, when the church does it, does it, then it's not about an individual, it's about a collective community of people. As the church and his bride goes out, he gets all the glory. As the people of God who serve and provide for the other people and their needs, he gets all the praise. There's a, but there's also a time and place where you just do things just you. You go into that room and you pray. and You don't tell anybody you prayed. You just pray. There's a time to give where nobody knows and nobody sees and it's not going to show up on an acknowledgement letter and it's not going to be here or there, right? You just give. And there's a time when you fast. Nobody knows about it, but it's just something between you and God and he's blessing that. We do so Because there's a reward that comes from it. Now, obviously, I don't know the full extent of that reward. And I can't tell you what it is. You're going to have to wait to get to heaven. That's going to be pretty cool. All right? You can ask Jesus. Hey, Jesus, what's the reward? He'll give it to you. But what I can tell you, right, is there's a side reward that comes from these things. Not from people, but from Jesus. There's a side reward that comes here on the earth, right? And here it is, and I've seen it in my own life, right? When you give to those who are poor and needy, you know what happens to you personally? You develop a compassionate heart. You move away from a selfish heart, a prideful heart, a heart that's all about you. And what you start to develop inside of you is a compassionate spirit and heart. You know what happens when you pray and you pray often? You learn to trust God. You trust them with your finances, with your marriage, with your kids, with your family, with your work, everything. And you know what happens when you learn to fast? You stop becoming so dependent on the things that this world offers so that you learn to live by him alone. The Bible says this, man does not live by bread alone, but by every good and perfect gift that comes from the Father in heaven. You live by Jesus And so when you pray and when you fast and when you give, you know what ultimately happens? You get connected to Jesus. And that's pretty cool. Let's pray. Father, help us. Help us to develop not an if mentality, but a when mentality. 
that we're looking for opportunities in this life when we can pray and when we can fast and when we can give. Not to be seen or heard or experienced by others, but just so that this is between me and you, God, and it's cool and it's a blessing. Help us to develop that. Help us to also consistently check our motives. Check our motives in such a way, am I doing this to get praise? Am I doing this to get admired? Am I doing this so people look at me differently? Or am I just doing this because I love Jesus and he loves me? I don't want to live like a hypocrite. I want to live as a forgiven child of God, holy and redeemed, with a new heart, a new spirit, a new mind. And God, help me today, right? Help us today that as we live life, man, Maybe in this age of everything that's out there in social media, we can start to live a little bit more on the download. We live life in secret in some ways. Not secrets hiding shame and guilt, but just doing simple things with you, God, that nobody else sees, but you just reward it and bless it in ways that we can't even begin to say thank you. In your name we pray, and we all say together, amen.